So this video um, is on the chapter seven, D-Day number one, part A. And again, I want you guys to do this, uh, watch this video after you've tried the problems. Um, and when you get stuck, then come back and do these. So on this first problem here, um, we're going to be substituting um, our values, our two points into this equation. So I'm going to be putting 2 in for x and 54 in for y. Then I'm going to be putting 4 into x and 486 in for y. And I'm going to be getting two equations. OK, let me make this a little smaller. OK. Um, and let me have this be clear. Okay, so I'm going to have 54 is equal to a times b raised to the power 2. And what I'm going to, and um, I'm going to have another equation, which is going to be 486. So 486 is equal to um, a times b raised to the power 4. Now, what you want to do with this is you want to you want to solve one of these equations for a or b, so you can substitute into the other. I would recommend solving for a, get one of them to be a equal. That way we don't have to deal with the b squared or the b to the fourth. And I would always do the one that has a smaller exponent, okay? So the one that has a smaller exponent is this one here, okay? Um, the one that has, here, let me see if I can get rid of that. Um, give me one sec. Get here, let me just get, no fill, clear. Okay, is that one there, that a um, times b to the power of two? So that's the smaller exponent, b to the fourth is bigger. It just will make the math easier for you, okay? Um, so now, um, I am going to um, rewrite this one. So I'm actually going to get back into this and I'm just going to come up here and just grab my arrow. Okay. And I'm going to try to rewrite this one um, as um, A equals. So I'm going to divide both sides by B squared. So I'm going to have 54 divided by B to the second is equal to, sorry, is equal to A. And I'm going to be substituting that into a in the other equation, okay? So what I mean by that is into this equation, whoops, let me change the color. Into this equation, I am going to be putting this in for a, okay? So let me rewrite this with that inside. Okay, so I'm going to have 486 equals, um, instead of my A, I'm going to have 54 over B to the second times um, my B to the fourth, B to the fourth. And I'm just going to put this b to the fourth over one because I want you to understand that really the b to the fourth is on top. Um, and the other one has the b squared, which is on bottom. So I can have some things cancel out. This b squared, hold on, let me get this. This b squared is going to cancel with this b to the fourth, giving me a b squared. So now I can rewrite this. So here, let me just uh, move over here. And so I am going to have, um, let me get that cleared again. I am going to have 486 is equal to 54B to the second. Okay. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 54. And so I'm going to get, um, 486 divided by 54. So let's see, 486 divided by 54 is 9. So 
I'm going to get 9 is equal to b squared. Again, just dividing both sides. Now, I'm going to take the square root of this, and when I take the square root, I end up getting a positive and a negative, okay? So I really would be getting a plus and a minus, and here's the plus and minus, a plus and a minus um, 3 is equal to b. Now, when we are doing these problems, your base, okay, your base, this base right here, well, let me grab a color, this base right here, this B, has to always be positive. So B is positive. It is not going to be negative. So in this case, this is only going to be the positive 3. Okay, I'm not going to be getting the negative 3. So now I know my B, and now I want to find my A. Now the easiest equation to use to solve for A would be this equation right here. I get uh, yellow. This equation right here, where it is a equal 54 over b squared. Okay, so that equation I am going to be substituting into down here. So let me just put that in. So I'm going to have 54 over b squared. Um, let me get rid of that again. Okay, so 54 over b squared, and my b squared is going to be 3 squared, which is 9. And that's going to equal my a, which is going to be 6. Okay, so now I know my equation is going to be, let me just write it here. Okay, so my equation is going to be y equal, y equal 6, which is my a, times 3, which is my b to the power x. That is going to be my equation. Okay. Um, now, the next problem. These ones here, um, they want us to evaluate without a calculator, okay? So really what's happening here is we are trying to figure out, and some of us might be able to do this in our head, but what we're basically trying to figure out is the following. We want to figure out if I have um, one half as my base, and this one half is going to be raised to some power, some power, I'm just going to put question mark, some power, and it's going to give me 1 over 32. And we need to figure out what that is. So 2 to the fifth is 32. So 1 half to the fifth is going to be 1 over 32. So my answer, my answer is 5. That is my answer. Okay. Now you don't need to write out what I did, the 1 half to some power equals 1 30, over 32. If you can do that in your head, that's fine. Okay, now on this one here, the next one. Um, I am starting out with um, 128 is being raised to some power to give me a 4. Okay, so um, I think I'm rooting this is, is probably what's happening. Um, and so when I'm doing this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get the bases to be the same because it's probably easier to compare them with the bases being the same. Okay. So let me, um, actually, I'm going to do a text box for this one so I can hit return. And I'm going to move 
implementation of. Okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to try to get both sides to be the same base, and I'm thinking two. Okay, so let me see. Two to the six would be 64. Two to the seventh is 128. Okay, I was just doing that on my calculator. So this is going to be two raised to the seventh times something, times something, okay? is going to equal two raised to the, oops, two raised to the second. Okay, so then what's happening is I can basically set my exponents equal to each other. So I've got seven, let me do it with a equation. I've got seven times something is equal to two. And so when I work that out, I am going to get that that something is going to equal um, two over seven. And that's gonna be my answer. So the answer is two sevenths. So if you want to put it, so put in a question mark, you can put X here, okay? Um, but basically we want to get both bases to be the same. Um, you are going to be raising it to some fractional power. If you're starting with a bigger base and getting smaller, you're rooting it with of some sort. And in this case, we aren't just doing a root. We're also raising it to the power two. So this means I took the seventh root of 128, which would have been two. And then I squared that, which would have given me the four. Okay. Um, on C. So this one um, is basically something I want to again rewrite. Okay. And so when I'm rewriting this, um, I'm going to put it in exponential form. So I have two to some power. Okay. I don't know what it is. That's my answer. Whatever I get. Um, as my answer is going to be my exponent here. So I have two to some power is equal to two raised to the power six. Now, when you see it in this form, I think you can see that the something has to equal six. And that's your answer. This whole thing is equal to six. Okay, log base two of two to the six is equal to six. And let's move on to the ones down here. Okay, so now we're solving. Now when we're solving these equations, um, you want to, number one, if it's an exponential, get your base to a power by itself, everything else to the other side, then you're gonna use logs. If you have a log, you wanna get your log as a single log and possibly rewrite it in exponential form or if it's log equal log, we're gonna set what the two logs equal, or that what you're taking the logs of equal to each other. So in this case, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide both sides by three. Oops, sorry, I want this one. So I am going to get seven raised to the power x is equal to, and this is going to be 123 divided by three. Okay, and 123 divided by 3 is 41. Okay, so let me here just rewrite that um, so everyone sees what I did. So 7 raised to the power of x is equal to 41. This is one that I definitely cannot get to be the same base because 7 to no nice power is 41. So I'm going to log both sides. Okay, and when I log both sides, um, and I take log of 7 to the power of x, the x is going to come in front. Okay, so I'm gonna end up getting x log seven. Okay, and I'm not writing any base because my base is 10, so I can put it in my calculator. Is equal to, and I'm gonna log the other side, log of 41. And then my next step, I am going to divide both sides by log of seven, so I'm gonna get x is equal to 
put my fraction here. Log of 41 over log of 7. And I'm going to put that in my calculator. And when I put it into my calculator, let's see, log of 41 over log of 7, I end up getting 1.90. Eight, so one point zero. Sorry, one point nine one. Let's say if I'm rounding it, and this doesn't really equal it. It's approximately that. So I'm going to come up here and get my approximate, and that's your answer. So you want to get your base uh, by itself, and so my base here is that seven, so I wanna get that seven to the power X by itself, then I can rewrite it in log, I can log both sides. Okay, um, next one, this one here, I wanna get this side to become a single logarithm, okay? And so when I have a plus, I am going to basically take the, what I'm doing the log of here, x, and what I'm taking the log of here, which is x minus 9, and I'm going to multiply them together. So I am going to have log base 6, let me get my base, log base 6, and get out of that base of x times x minus 9, which is going to be x squared minus 9x. And that equals two. Now that I have it as a single logarithm, okay, so now that this right here, whoops, hold on, I'm gonna grab a pen. This right here is a single logarithm. I can now rewrite it in exponential form, okay? So I am going to rewrite in an exponential form. So I'm gonna get six raised to the power two is equal to x squared minus nine uh, x. And then um, that's gonna be a 36. What I'm gonna do is I am going to get zero on this side. So zero equal, and I'm gonna have x squared minus 9x, and then that 6 squared, which is really a 36, I'm going to subtract to this side. And now I'm going to factor this, okay? So now I'm trying to think what multiplies to, what multiplies to a negative 36 and adds to a negative 9. So I'm thinking um, x minus 12 times x plus 3. So my answers, this one, I'm going to get x, here, let me do it with, I'm going to get x is equal to 12. And my other one I'm going to get, and here, let me just uh, give a new one this back a little. My other one I'm going to get is x equal negative 3. Now when I get those answers, I need to always check to make sure in your original problem, okay, so when I say original problem, okay, I am talking about, let me redo it, I'm talking about I want to put it into this log and I want to put it into this log. So when I put my 12 in here, that's okay. I'm taking log of a positive. When I put my 12 in here, that's okay. I'm getting a positive. So this is going to be an answer. But when I take my negative 3 and I put my negative 3 in here, or I take my negative 3 and put it in here, in those cases, I'm going to take log of a negative. So I cannot have that happen. Okay, so again, my answer is going to be just x equal 12. 
um, on this one here. This one is a single logarithm. Okay, I have it as a single logarithm. So I am going to rewrite this in exponential form. So I am going to have 4 raised to the power 3 is equal to 5x plus 2. And 4 raised to the power 3, if I do that math, is a 64. So I'm going to have 64 is equal to 5x, 5x uh, plus 2. I am going to subtract 2 from both sides. So I am going to get 62 is equal to 5x, which means that when I divide both sides by 5, I'm going to get x is equal to um, 62 over 5. And I would just leave that as that answer. But again, you always want to come back up to the original problem. And you want to make sure that this answer, when you put it in here, is not going to have it where you take log of a negative. And it's not. It's going to be a positive. So this particular one, let me just erase that, is going to be an answer. Okay. So this is an answer. It works. On D, okay, um, I need to make this into a single logarithm. So I need to make this into a single logarithm. So what I'm going to do is the four is going to, let me just move it down slightly. The four is going to become the exponent here, and this three is going to become the exponent here, okay? So let me first write that. So this is going to end up being log base two. And here, let me move it so that isn't gonna be in the way. So um, log base two. Oops, got out of my equation. Log base two. of x to the fourth, I'm put parentheses, x raised to the fourth, okay, so that, I don't need parentheses around my four, just one of my parentheses around that, um, minus, and then I'm going to have that three, get rid of that for a second, that three is going to come here and raise my five, so this is going to be um, log log base two, get my base, log base two of five to the third, and five to the third is 125. Okay, so again, this was a five to the third, but a five to the third is 125 equals one. Now I'm going to write this as a single logarithm. So I am going to have log base two. Get rid of that. So log base two of, and when it's a minus, it's going to be division. So I'm going to have x to the fourth over 125 equals one. And now I am going to rewrite this in exponential form. So I'm going to take my base, which is 2, to the power of 1, which is really just 2, is equal to x to the fourth over 125. Whoops, I meant to put it over 125. And so again, this is going to be. Let me just make it smaller just to see the problem. So this is going to be um, basically 2 is equal to x to the fourth over 125. I'm going to multiply both sides by 125. 2 times 125 is 250. 
is equal to x raised to the fourth. I am then going to take the fourth root of both sides, okay? So, um, when I take the fourth root of 250, fourth root of 250, and if you're looking for the root, it's right here. So if I'm taking the fourth root of 250, oops, let me get it here. Fourth root of 250, that's going to be my x. Now, when I take a fourth root, I really get a positive and a negative when I take a fourth root. But again, we have to be careful because I can't get a negative that I'm taking um, a log of here. So in this case, the negative is not going to be one of my answers. Okay, so this is just going to be positive, not negative. And if I take the fourth root of 250 on my calculator, um, so fourth root of 250, I get three point, about a 3.98 if I'm rounding. Okay, so that is going to be um, a 3.98 about is going to equal your x. Now again, the plus and the minus, I would have looked to see, hey, can I do a positive and negative in here? But if I... Um, but here, sorry, that's not the original problem. I need to always look at the original problem. So when I look at the original problem, um, okay. so when I look at the original problem and I'm looking to put the positive and negative in here, that is an X, so I cannot have it be a negative. So my answer is, whoops. My answer is just 3.98, not negative 3.98. Now on this one, again, get this to be a single log, okay? Now when I look at these problems, when I see something like this here, um, and I see that it's all numbers. I, I ask myself, can I simplify that? But the eight to no nice power is 36. So, so I'm not gonna do anything with that, but sometimes you can, and it's just gonna end up being a plain old number and it might make your problem easier. In this case, it's not. So I'm gonna get this side to be all one log. So this is gonna be log base eight. Log base eight of, and I'm going to be multiplying x minus 4 times x plus 1. Now, when I do that and I am multiplying those together, you can think of it as a diamond. You can think of it as a negative 4 times 1, um, which gives us a negative 4 and a negative 4 plus 1, which is a negative 3. So I end up getting x squared minus 3x minus 4, and that's what I'm going to be putting right here. Okay. So I'm going to be getting x to the second minus 3x minus 4 is equal to log base 8 of 36. And now that I have a log equal a log, and they are the same base, I can set... Um, x squared minus 3x minus 4 equal to 36, and then I'm going to be working out that quadratic. So I'm going to get x to the second um, minus 3x minus 4 is equal to 36. I'm going to get everything on one side, 0 on the other. So I'm going to get x to the second minus 3x minus 40 is equal to 0. And then I want to think of something that multiplies to a negative 40 and adds to a negative 3. So if I 
am doing this in orange and I'm trying to work that out that I really want it to multiply to a negative 40 and add to a negative three. And that is gonna be a negative eight and a positive five. So that means my factors My factors are going to be x minus 8 and x plus 5 equals 0. So that means I get x equal 8 as one answer. And I get x equal negative 5 as my other answer. But again, I always need to check my answers and I'm checking my answers right here to make sure that this and this, the things I'm taking the log of, don't end up being a negative. If I put eight in, it's going to be okay. If I put a negative five in, that's not gonna be okay. So that one right there is not going to be an answer. The one that is gonna be an answer is x equal eight. Now on letter F, um, in this problem, um, they do not have that minus three in parentheses, um, that X minus three in parentheses. So if it, this had been this, then I would have taken x minus 3 equal 2, and I would have worked that out because I'd have log equal log. But they do not have parentheses here, so I can't assume it's there. So what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to take this number to this side so it's not over here with my log. And let me get my logs on the same side. So I'm going to want to get this log on the left-hand side. So I'm going to rewrite this as um, log base five. Let me get my base. Log base five. Let me shrink this slightly. Okay. Log base five of x minus log base five of two. So again, I'm subtracting that log over. So I will have them on the same side um, since I have a number. And then that minus three, I'm going to add to the other side. And now I'm going to rewrite the left-hand side as a single logarithm. So I am going to have log base five of, um, and with the minus, that means this is going to be x divided by two equals three. Now that I have it as a single logarithm, I can rewrite this in exponential form. So I am going to take five raised to the power three is equal to x over two. And I'm just gonna do this right here. Okay, um, five to the third is 125. So I'm gonna get 125 is equal to x over two. And I am going to uh, multiply both sides by two. And so when I multiply both sides by two, I am going to get um, 250 is equal to X. And again, you always want to make sure that you check to see if this is going to make your equation where you're taking log of a negative, but you're not. And okay, when you put 250 in there, that's gonna work, that's gonna be your answer. Okay, so 
make sure I got all of those. Okay, so now expanding, okay? So when I'm expanding this, I'm gonna get a log for my A and a log for my B. And just so we all understand, this um, right here, this B, this B is being raised to the power three force. Okay, the root is your denominator of your exponent, and the power that I'm raising it to is always my numerator. So that is really a three force um, that my B is being raised to. And so I'm going to write this as two separate logarithms. Both of them are going to be base four, so I'm going to go log base four. Let me get my base again. Got to figure out if there's an easy way to get, to get to the base every time. Log base four of, now this is going to be a to the second, to, and I don't need that exponent, a to the second. I'm going to actually clean that up here in a second. Plus log base four, and for this, get rid of this, um, remember, this was a b raised to the power three force okay and so now what i can do is when i have a log of something to a power the power moves in front so for the first um, log the two is going to come in front and i'm going to have two log base four Um, of, whoops, I got to get out of my um, subscript, of A plus, and then my three force is going to come in front, three force log base four. Log B, and that's going to be my answer. Now, number five, I'm going the opposite direction. I want it to become a single logarithm. So what's going to basically happen, um, this four is gonna come and raise this power, this three to the power. Um, this minus here, okay, this minus here, means that, let me get a different color. So this minus here means that we're going to be having that as a division, okay? And then this plus here, it means it's gonna be on top, it's gonna to be multiplying on top. So anytime it's a minus, that's gonna be in your denominator. And anytime it's a positive, it's gonna be in your numerator. And if I have more than one thing on top, they're multiplying. And if I have more than one thing on bottom, they're multiplying. Um, okay, so I always start when they ask me for a single logarithm to start with log base two, because this is a base two, of something, okay, of something. All of the something's going to go in here. Now, I know I'm going to have a fraction because I have a minus in one of these logs. Now, I said that three to the fourth, three to the fourth is going to be on top. That minus um, log base two to the 27, that means I'm gonna have a 27 on bottom. And also on top, I'm gonna have a nine. Okay. Now, this if you're looking at it, these are all multiples of nine, so I can actually kind of clean this up. So, um, oops, hold on, I wanted to get a pen. So, if you think about this, this is a three to the fourth. I can put this in my calculator, but I'm just trying to show you guys. My nine is a three squared. My 27 is a three to the third. So what's going to happen is three of these is going to cancel with three of these, leaving me with just three to the first. And my three to the first times my three to the second is going to be a three to the third. 
427. Now again, I could take all of this and put that into my calculator. And if I do that, I'm going to get a 27. So then my final answer for this is going to be, let me get back to typing. So my final answer for this is going to be log base two, log base two of, and again, all of that ends up being a 27. And there you go. That's your answer. Um, on number six, Okay, so on this one, we are graphing it and we want to find the asymptote. When you have an exponential graph, let me just get my pen here. When you have an exponential graph, this right here, that plus three, is telling us the whole graph got moved up three, which means your horizontal asymptote, which normally is sitting on the x-axis at y equals zero, is going to be at y equal three. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to draw in y equal three, that is my asymptote. Now I'm not moving it left or right because this is just a three to the power X. There's nothing, it's not three to the X plus or minus something in my exponent. So now I'm just basically doing three to powers. Okay. So if I am going to graph um, and right now, let me move my cursor so you can see. I'm coming right here to where my asymptote is. And I'm basically going to be doing three to the zero, three to the first, three to the second, and so forth. So I am going to go three to the zero, which is one. So I went up one. If I go over one, three to the first is one, two, three. If I go over two, one, two, three to the second is nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's kind of off my graph. Okay. And then I can connect this. And that's your exponential graph. Now, the next one is a logarithm logarithms are going to have a vertical asymptote. So this right here is telling me um, that my vertical asymptote is going to be at x equal negative three because whatever makes that zero, I cannot take log of zero. Log of any, of any base of, the, of zero is going to be undefined. So I'm going to come here to x equal negative three and I'm going to draw my asymptote. And then this plus two here, okay, this plus two is basically moving my whole graph down too. So if you wanted to kind of think of a, um, like a um, um, locator point, you could think of it as negative three comma two. So negative three comma two, I'm going to put it in yellow because it's not actually a point on my graph, but negative three comma two right here. Okay, that, that's not a point on my graph here. Let me do it in orange so you can see it better. But that, that point right there is not physically on my graph, but that's where I'm going to start going and doing my log. Okay, and my log I'm doing is base uh, two. So I want to think about, okay, log base two of one, log base two of two, log base two of four. I want numbers that are two to powers, okay? So log base two of one is zero. Log base two of two is one. Log base two of four is two. So I am going to come to where this point is, okay? I'm at that orange point. It's, again, it's not a point on my graph. I'm going to get um, a pink one. That's going to be my points. So I am coming right here to where this point is, and I'm going to be going out one, and I'm going to be going out two, and I'm going to be going out four. Okay, so as I go out one, I don't know if you can see my little cursor there, log base two of one is zero. 
And when I go out two from that orange point, log base two of two is one. And when I go out four from that orange point, one, two, three, four, log base two of four is two. If I went out eight, five, six, seven, eight, log base two of eight is one, two, three. So I'm just gonna get rid of this orange point um, because again, that's really not on my graph. That was just kind of where I was um, going from. And then I'm gonna draw my logarithm graph. Okay. Um, and let me just officially write in my asymptotes. I guess I didn't really read the whole problem here. Okay, so this one is going to be y equal 3. This one's going to be x equal negative 3. And it's important that you tell me x equal or y equal and not just give me a number. Okay, it is a line. So just giving me a number is not going to work. Okay. Um, these ones are inequalities. This is an absolute value inequality. Now, the first thing I would do is make sure my absolute value is by itself. And in this case, my absolute value is by itself, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm basically going to write um, two equations, okay? Um, so one of them is going to be 3x minus two equals 19. And the other equation is going to be 3x minus 2 equals a negative 19. And now I'm going to solve both of these equations. So for this one, when I add 2 to both sides, I'm going to get 3x is equal, sorry, 3x. 3x is equal to, when I add 2, 21. When I add two on this side, I am going to get three X is equal to, and when I add two, I'm gonna get a negative 17. Then I'm going to divide both sides by three. This one, I get X is equal to seven. Over here, I'm gonna get X is equal to negative 17 over three. And these are going to be my boundary points on my number line. Okay. So now I'm going to get or draw okay, a number line. So on my number line, I'm going to have a negative 17 thirds and I'm going to have a seven. Now I always want to look back at my original problem to see if it should be open circle or closed circle because of the equal, they're both gonna be closed circles, okay? So I'm gonna have a closed circle here and I'm gonna have a closed circle here. And then I basically want to figure out if I'm shading in between or out. You can test a point. For example, I could test a point that's in between these, let's say zero. If I was to put zero into this, I would get three times zero minus two greater than or equal to 19. Um, that ends up giving me an absolute value of negative two. Absolute value of negative two is two. Is two greater than or equal to 19? No. So zero is in between here. That did not make it true. So I don't shade where zero is. I'm gonna shade outside, okay? Because again, zero, which was in between, did not make it true. Now, when I think about these graphs, I think about that this is really saying, I want things that is more, more than 19 away. More than 19 away. That means it's gonna go outside. If I wanted it less than 19 away, that would mean I'm going inside, okay? Um, so this is going to be my graph and I also need to give an answer. Hold on, let me get rid of that. That's just a mark I made. And so my answer is going to be X is less than or equal to negative 17 thirds. That's that piece. And I need the word or, 
And then the second piece is X is greater than or equal to seven. And so this is going to be my graph and my answer. Okay, so these um, inequalities should be on a number line um, and you should be doing shading. Any of them that has just a single variable should be on the number line. So number eight, similar. Now on a problem like this, um, what I am going to do is I am basically going to factor this. So I am going to factor um, this and I know I'm gonna be getting something x plus or minus something. Here, let me just get my parentheses. Okay, I'm gonna get something times something equals zero, basically, or in this case, I should say not equal, I'm gonna actually use my inequalities, um, is less than or equal to zero. And so if I'm trying to factor this, I'm really asking myself, okay, what multiplies to a negative 12 and adds to four? So that's gonna be a six and a negative two. So that means my factors are going to be um, x plus six and x minus two less than or equal to zero. So if I wanna think about my boundary points, my boundary points, my boundary points are going to be negative six and two. Those are gonna be my boundary points because that makes both of these zero. So um, again, I'm gonna draw my number line. Oops, let me draw my number line. I have a negative six and a two. Now again, I can test a value out. Um, zero is always a nice one to test. Um, you can either test it up here. Let me do this in pink. You can either test it into this, or if I do this in orange, you can test it into this, whichever is easier for you. Um, if I'm putting it into the top one and I'm putting zero in for my x's, I am going to basic, basically get zero squared plus four times zero. So I'm gonna get negative 12 is less than or equal to zero, which is true, okay? If I was doing it into this orange, what's gonna happen is when I put zero, I'm gonna get six in my first parenthesis. I'm gonna get negative two in my second parenthesis, less than or equal to zero. So you see I'm getting the same thing. That is gonna be true because that is a negative 12. So where is my zero? My zero happens to be in between these. So that means that's what makes it true. I'm gonna be shading in between. And again, you want to always pay attention to your inequality to see if it should be solid or, or open circles. Because of the equal, they're gonna be solid. So I'm gonna have solid here at negative six, solid here at two, and I'm shading everything in between. And then my answer when it's in this in-between form is going to be negative six, start with your smaller number, and then it's always gonna be less than or less than or equal to x, and keep the same direction, less than or equal to two, that's gonna be your answer. Now, when I personally do these, I don't plug in a value. What I do is I know that this graph is a parabola, okay? The x squared plus four x minus 12 would be a parabola. And I know that basically, I'm gonna do this in green over this. I know that this negative six would be an x-intercept and this two would be an, uh, an x-intercept. And because it's a positive x squared, this would be like a open up parabola. And what the original inequality is saying is I want, where is the parabola less than or equal to zero? Where is the parabola basically below the x-axis? And so where is it gonna be below the x-axis? It's gonna be below the x-axis here. You see here I am below. So I end up getting the same answer. Just another way of thinking about it, okay? I'm gonna take that off. Okay, that's how I personally do it. I don't plug them in. I think about it as a parabola.
I know that these open or closed circles, depending, would have been where it equals, and it's on the x-axis. And I look to see if I want it above or below. Okay, and let's see. Last two. Um, this one is an inequality on a xy axis because you have two variables, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph each of them. I'm going to do them each in a different color. Um, let me, um, I'll plot my points in let's say black. So this one is a parabola. It has a vertex at 1 comma 4. So I'm going to go to 1 comma 4 and I'm going to put my point. Now this is a parabola. We have this um, negative two as my stretch. So what that means is when I'm plotting this, I'm basically doing zero squared, one squared, two squared, three squared. And so I would normally be going zero, 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 one, one, two, four, three, nine, because three squares nine, four squared 16. But because of that negative two, I'm timesing all of my squares by negative two. So I'm going to go to my vertex, okay, the point I just plotted. I'm going to go to the right one. And when I go to the right one, one squared is one. And I times that by negative two, I get negative two. I'm going to get the same on the other side. I'm going to go back to my vertex. And now I'm going to go over two from my vertex, okay? And when I go over two from my vertex here, let me see if I can get my mouse. So when, let me get it here with this. So when I come here and I go over two, okay, I'm going to go two squared is four, and then I'm going to times it by a negative two. So let me just get rid of that point there. Okay. So I, again, at my vertex going out to two squares, four times it by a negative two, I'm going to go down eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I went eight from here okay so again i was up here let me get my cursor i went over two two squared is four times up by a negative two i get negative eight so i count down negative eight and i'm going to have the same on the other side okay so i've got that point there and i've got that point there okay let me make this point nicer And when I look at this, this inequality is not um, equal. It is strictly less than. So that means I am going to have a dashed um, curve. So let me do a dashed curve. That means nothing on this parabola is a solution. And I want things that are less than. Less than means below. So I am going to get a fainter color. I'm going to change it so that it's fainter. Okay, I'll make it a little thicker so I can shade. And I'm going to come over here to where um, my vertex is. And I, again, I want, where's my, where's it less than or under my parabola? And that means I'm going to go down here. So I'm going to be shading everything here forever and ever. Now I'm going to do my exponential graph. Okay. Um, again, I'm just going to get black to plot my uh, points to start with. So um, for this exponential, I know I have an asymptote at y equal negative two. Um, let me draw that in, I'm gonna do it in green, okay? So negative two, so this is not part of my graph, this is just my asymptote at y equal negative two. Um, then when I'm looking at this, I see that um, this x minus two is telling me that I'm going to the right two. So I am going to come right here to where the asymptote is touching the y-axis and I'm going to go to the right two, I'm sorry, not two, sorry, right one because of that x minus one. So again, you can kind of think of um, a locator point as 
sorry, I don't know why I keep wanting to write two, one comma two. So I'm gonna go to one comma two, um, one comma negative two, wow. Well, it's been a long day. One comma negative two. I'm just gonna put this little point temporarily. That's where I'm gonna be, right here. It's not a point on my graph, but that's where I'm gonna be doing two to the power, two to the power, okay? So I, right here, I'm gonna be doing two to the power zero, which is one. And then as I go over one, two to the power one is two. Go over two, two to the power two is one, two, three, four. Go over three to the power three is eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let me get rid of all my little extras. I don't need that, that, whoops, I did need my shading. Uh, here, let me get rid of that. And then let me get my shading back in, sorry. Okay, so here, here's my shading. That's kind of a dark shading, let me get lighter. Okay, and then I'm going to connect my points. And again, those points are going to be, in this case, solid because of the um, inequality having the equal. So it's going to go like this. And again, here, let me just get those points in black so we can see those points better. And then the inequality says that it wants it to be greater than, okay? So greater than means above. So I'm gonna shade above. So I'm gonna come, whoops, I didn't want it to be gray. Sorry, I was trying to get pink. So I'm gonna be shading above. And as I shade above my exponential, you see that when I shade above, part of it here ends up being two colors. So this right here, um, this right here is going to be, let me see if I can get a color. That's, this right here is going to be my solution. That's where both colors were. That's where I got the, the blue and that's where I got the green, I mean the um, pink, maybe I'll do it in purple. That would make sense, that thing would make purple. And that would be my answer, that part that kind of looks purple. Last one. Um, on this one, this is an expon, I mean, as a square root problem. For a square root problem, you always wanna isolate it. It is isolated, that is by itself. Then what you wanna do is this right here, this x plus two, that is where you're going to check your answer because remember that a square root can never equal a negative because right here they're asking us for the principal root. So that x plus two is where I'm gonna check to make sure it's not negative. I can have it be zero, I just can't have it be negative. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to solve this. I'm going to square both sides. So when I square this side, I get seven uh, minus three X equals. And when I square this side, I get an X plus two squared. So now I'm going to work this out. So this is gonna be a seven minus three X equal. And this is an X plus two times X plus two. When I work that out, that's gonna be an X squared plus four X plus four. Um, so again, just a little note, if you know the formula for a perfect square, a plus b squared equals a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, okay? Here's my a squared. Here's my twice ab because I'm multiplying those together. And then here's my b squared. Let me get rid of all those. Or... You can also think of this as, again, it's an x plus two, x plus two. So you can do a box or you can think of it as a diamond. Two and two, multiplies to four, adds to four. This multiply to four is that, the add to four is the four x. 
So now I'm going to solve this. So I'm going to get zero on this side, everything else on the other side. So I'm going to have x squared. I'm going to add 3x. So I'm going to get 7x. I'm going to minus 7. So I get a negative 3. Just making sure that's right. x squared plus 4 x plus 4 minus 7. Yeah. Um, plus 3, 7x. Yep. Sorry, this is not a pretty problem. So what I have to do, because nothing's going to multiply to a negative 3 and add to a 7. I can't factor it. I don't like to complete the square when it's a odd x. So I'm going to use quadratic formula. Okay. So I'm going to do x is equal to negative b, which means negative 7, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 49, okay, that's your 7 squared, minus 4 times my a, which is 1, times my c, which is negative 3, all over 2 times my a, which is 1. So now I am going to put this into my calculator. Hold on, let me just move this. Oh, I guess I can't move it. I'm kind of on the edge. So when I put this in my calculator, and let me just uh, show what that would look like in my calculator. focused. Let me see if the light no, it makes it worse. Okay, so when I put this into my calculator and I work this out, let me focus this one more time, see if I can get it focused. Okay, so um, it was a negative seven and I'm going to actually do alpha y equal for a fraction. So I did alpha y equal to get a fraction. Let me see if I can just make this. Um, there, maybe that's a little better. So I have a fraction here. It's hard to see it. So I'm going to do negative seven. Now it's plus or minus, but I'm just going to do the plus. Second and then the x squared for a square root. Of seven squared, I'm just going to type in 49 minus four times my a, which is 1, times my c, which was a negative 3. Sorry, it's not focusing that great. Okay, well, it's the best I can do right now, sorry. Um, all over 2 times my a, which is 2. And I am going to get a negative 3 halves, okay? And then, uh, oops, sorry, not a negative 3 halves because that should have been a 49. I was going to say, it should not be a nice answer. So I'm going to come up here. I need to change this to a 49. Now, I don't want to type over this because if I type, it's going to type over everything. So what I'm going to do is on this calculator, on the delete buttons, insert. So if I do second and delete, I can insert. So I go to where I want to insert in front of, and then I'll put my nine. Now I can hit return and I get 0.4, let's say 0.41. So that's going to be one of my answers. I'm going to come up here, snag this. And instead of this being a plus, now I'm going to do it as a minus. And I get a negative 7.4. So let me put those answers back in. Okay. So for this, um, I am going to get, let me get my pen. X is equal to. 0.41 about, okay, and the other one, x is equal to about a negative 7.4, negative, wow, negative 7.41, 
And then I want to check those up here into this um, x plus 2. This is going to make it positive, so that one's okay. This one's going to make it negative, so that one's not an answer. Okay? And I believe that's the last question. Hopefully this was helpful. Um, again, meant to just have you go through and look at the ones that you need help on. Hopefully you try these problems beforehand. Um, good luck on it.